first thing you want to do when you're doing a performance test is to find the service fittings. And so basically they're going to be a service fitting for the low side and a service fitting for the high side. And they could be anywhere under the hood. Sometimes they're going to be in an easy location to find. Sometimes they're going to be in a difficult location to find. So I've, I've located the service fittings. Here's the, the high side fitting. And down underneath here is the low side fitting. And when you take these caps off, don't just lay them up on the hood here because they're going to get lost. And it's pretty important to put the caps back on when you're done because it keeps debris out of those fittings. So I typically either put them in my pocket or lay them in the toolbox to where they're not going to fall down in the engine compartment. If they fall down in the engine compartment, it's going to be challenging to find them. So I'm just going to put these in my pocket. So I've got the caps removed. Next, I've got to have a manifold set to be able to read pressures. So to be able to read pressures on the low side, I'll take the blue hose. It's got a quick connect coupling. It is very much like an air or pneumatic coupling where you put something on there. So I find my low side fitting, and it's down inside the, the engine compartment right here. It's a little bit challenging to get to. So when I'm, before I put my hand down that area, I want to make sure that, that there's not something that could hurt me or anything like that. So uh, I'm going to go in from this angle right here. And I'm going to pull up on the collar, push it down, and release the collar. Once I've pushed it down and released the collar, I'm going to tug on it just a little bit to make sure it doesn't fall off. If it falls off, it wasn't on there very good. Okay? Next, I'll put on the high side fitting. So I'll remove it from the manifold. And then my high side fitting is right here. And I'll pull up on the coupler, push it down, and release it. Check my work there to make sure it doesn't fall off. For some reason, I'm not feeling confident about that one. But it seems like it's okay there. If it was not on there good, it would probably uh, not stay. So now, once I've got it connected, the gauges really haven't changed yet because once you make the connection, you have to go ahead and turn on the connection. You have to screw in the, the service valve here to depress the Schrader. So I'm going to go ahead and screw this clockwise, and that's going to depress the Schrader underneath that connection. When I do that, then pressure is going to rush up to my hose. Okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and do that for the low side fitting. And now, once I've turned that connection on, there should be pressure up to the gauges. And this vehicle's been off for a little while, so this is static pressure is what I'm reading here. And I've got about around 60 on the low side and approximately 60 PSI on the high side. And we stated just a minute ago that that static pressure just tells me that there's some refrigerant in the system. It doesn't tell me if the system's charged up too high or too low or just right. It just tells me that there's some pressurized substance in the AC system. All right? So the next thing I want to do is once I've got this connected is I'll start the vehicle I'll turn the AC to high, turn the blower on high, and I'll let the system run for a couple of minutes. After a couple of minutes, I'll monitor my pressures, and I'll check the duct temperature. Basically, it's this guy right here. It's got a brown lead on it. This plugs into the bolt-on slot on your meter, and there's a plus and a minus, and so make sure you plug it in the right location. Turn the meter to millivolts, and hit the gallon button. Once you turn it to millivolts and hit the yellow button, then this thing is reading temperature. So I can put this lead in the center duct and, and I get a, an idea of the duct temperature. Okay? Right now, it's sensing about 62 degrees Fahrenheit in the shop. And that's about what we estimated to be a while ago, wasn't it? Okay, so we'll stick this in the center duct, start the vehicle. Somebody open the door about another six inches there so we can vent our.
for it to be normal. So we can just let that happen. After a couple of minutes, the high side pressure should be about anywhere from two times ambient temperature up to three times ambient temperature. So let's see what we've got. It's been a minute or a minute and a half. So the high side is a little bit below 150, probably about 140 to 150 there. The low side is, is pulling down to about 20. Okay? Let's check the duct temperature. The duct temperature is about 40 degrees. Okay? So we've got about 140, 150 on the high side, about, about 25 on the low side. So this thing is doing well. It's performing well. The pressures are, are, are good enough. The duct temperature is in the window that it needs to be in. Okay? Now, when I shut the vehicle off, those pressures should come back to static in a, in a couple of minutes because there's no compressor activity happening. One other thing that you can do when you're doing a performance test is you can feel the components. The components on the low side of the system should be cold. The components on the high side of the system should be hot. If I ever have a cold spot anywhere in the high side of the system, that is a restriction. I've got a blockage at that point. All right? So let's see what happens to our pressures when I shut the vehicle off. Once I shut the vehicle off, the compressor's not turning anymore, so the high side's going to slowly come down, the low side's going to slowly come up. If I give it enough time, they're going to equalize. Okay? So, we check this vehicle, it's cooling well, and the pressures are acceptable. When I'm done with this process, then I need to take the manifold set off the vehicle. So to do that, I need to first turn those Schrader valves or those, those manifold settings counterclockwise. That's going to let go of the Schrader. If you don't do that, it's going to, it's going to take, have a potential to lose some refrigerant out of it. So we turn them counterclockwise. Always remember to do that first. Counterclockwise on the high side counterclockwise on the low side. And then here's something you kind of want to be careful with is when you disconnect it, it's going to, just for a split second, it's going to have an open leak there. So but if you do it quickly and with sure hands, then it's not going to leak much. Okay? So I'm going to grab it carefully like that and I'm done. Okay? Did you hear it spit? That spit was just a little bit of refrigerant that leaked out of there. If I can hook this back up to my Manifold up here. On the low side, it's a little more challenging to get to, so you want to do this with sure hands. All right? So, ready? And it, you really didn't hear it spit because the pressure was lower on it than it was on the high side. Now, what do we do with the refrigerant that's trapped in this manifold set? We could leave it in there, but you all are going to reclaim it because we want these things to be empty when we're done at the end of the day. So I want to show you how to do that. So to, to capture the refrigerant that we got trapped in the manifold set, we'll use this machine here. And basically, I use, doing a performance test, I use the blue and the red hose. The blue hose for the low side, the red hose for the high side. I didn't do anything with the yellow hose, did I? The yellow hose is how I'm going to get refrigerant out of this. So I'll take the yellow hose off. All right. Uh, so evidently, these manifolds got opened up. And something. I didn't open them all. I did it. Somehow some refrigerant got in there. So what you'll do is take the yellow hose off, connect it to this machine right here. It's got a little Schrader port. Screw it on there. And then you turn the machine on. The button's underneath here. Once it goes through its warm-up cycle, then you're going to hit reclaim on the machine. When you hit reclaim on this machine, it's going to pull refrigerant out of this manifold set uh, and into the tank. So it, now it's at zero, so I'm ready to hit reclaim. It's going to purge just a little bit, and then it's going to pull the refrigerant out of this manifold set. One thing you have to do is open these valves up. 
when you're recovering the refrigerator. So you open the valves, turn the machine on, it's going to pull it out of here. When this is done, it'll have zero pressure in the gauges. All right? So it'll say complete here also when it's done. When it says complete, you can unhook it, turn the gauges back into the tool. All righty? So I'm just going to leave this hanging here. That might take three or four minutes for that to happen.